Hello, Rockets. I'm so happy to see you again. Um, we are enjoying some really nice weather this week, and I am so excited that we get to go outside and enjoy the sunshine and the warmth. It's been really fun. I've been able to go out and work out in my yard and garden and start getting it prepared for planting season. And so that's been really fun. And I've really enjoyed doing that. Well, I am here to read you this week's story. And because I was thinking so much about the outside and all of those things that are coming, we also are starting to see a ton of bugs, right? And a lot of ants and things like that. So today I'm going to read you one of my favorite authors is um, of all time. His name is Chris Van Halsburg, and you might recognize him. He is the one that wrote um, Polar Express. And if you're a Jumanji fan, he is um, the author of that book. He also is something cool about him is he's an illustrator too. So not only does he write his books, but he also um, brings the pictures and draws the pictures in his book book so it, it really brings it to life and he's a fantastic artist so I want you to look at this book because this book is told and in the pictures are seen you see them through the perspective of what an ant would see so things that we would see as a human that would look very small might look big to an ant right so there's some things that they're going to encounter that are everyday things to you and I that are going to be things that they don't know or could seem very odd or large to them and when they're not to us. So I want you to try to guess the household items or food items that you see in here um, that they're going to encounter on their journey. So this book is called Two Bad Ants. The news traveled swiftly through the tunnels of the ant world. A scout returned with a remarkable discovery. A beautiful sparkling crystal. When the scout presented the crystal to the ant queen, she took a small bite, then quickly ate the entire thing. She deemed it the most delicious food she had ever tasted. Nothing could make her happier than to have more, much more. The ants understood. They were eager to gather more crystals because the queen was the mother of them all. Her happiness made the whole ant nest a happy place. <clears throat> I want you to think, what could that crystal be that she liked to eat throughout this story? It was late in the day when they departed. Long shadows stretched over the, in the entrance to the ant kingdom. One by one, the insects climbed out, following the scout, who had made it clear there were many crystals where the first one had been found, but the journey was long and dangerous. They marched into the woods that surrounded their underground home. Dust turned to twilight, twilight turned to night. The path they followed twisted and turned every bend, leading them deeper into the dark forest. More than, one, <clears throat> more than once, the lines of ants stopped and anxiously listened for the sounds of hungry spiders. But, they, but all they heard was the call of crickets echoing through the woods like distant thunder. Dew formed on the leaves above. Without warning, huge cold drops fell on the marching ants. A firefly passed overhead, or excuse me, a firefly that passed overhead excuse me, overhead that for an instance lit up the woods with a blinding flash of gold, blue, green light. At the edge of the forest stood a mountain. Is it really a mountain? Or is that a house? But it looks like a mountain to them. The ants looked up and could not see its peak. It seemed to reach right to the heavens but they did not stop. Up the side they climbed, higher and higher. 
The wind whistled through the cracks of the mountain's face. The ants could feel its force bending their delicate antennae. Their legs grew weak as they struggled upward. At least they reached, at, le at last they reached an edge and crawled through a narrow tunnel. When the ants came out of the tunnel, they found themselves in a strange world. Smells that they had known all their lives, smells of dirt and grass and rotting plants had vanished. There were no more wind. There was no more wind. And most puzzling of all, it seemed that the sky was gone. They crossed smooth, excuse me, they crossed smooth, shining surfaces, then followed the scout up a glassy curved wall. They had reached their goal. From the top of the wall, they looked below to see a sea of crystals. One by one, the ants climbed down into the sparkling treasure. So they say the sky is gone. Well, we see that when we're in our homes, do we see the sky when we look up? So that was very odd to those ants. And so now we see them, they look like they're in the kitchen of a house, very different atmosphere for them. Quickly, they each chose a crystal, then turned to start the journey home. There was something about this unnatural place that made the ants nervous. In fact, they left in such a hurry that none of them noticed the two small ants who stayed behind. So do you see what this is right here? This gives us an idea of what those small crystals might be. And so it gives us a jar that they're in. So I want you to think, what could those crystals be that you would find in a kitchen? Why go back? One asked the other. This place may not feel like home, but look at all these crystals. You're right, said the other. We can stay here and eat this tasty treasure every day forever. So the two ants ate the crystals, crystal after crystal, until they were too full to move and fell asleep. <clears throat> Daylight came. The sleeping ants were unaware of changes taking place in their new found home. A giant silver spoon hovered above them and plunged deep into the crystals. It shoveled up both ants and crystals and carried them high into the air. Have you figured out what the crystals are? There's a spoon dipping into it. Hmm. The ants were wide awake when the scoop turned, dropping them from a frightening height. They tumbled through space in a shower of crystals and fell into a boiling brown lake. So I want you to think, this right here is from the ants' perspective, okay? So something that we find in our kitchen, I hope you figured it out by now, the crystals are sugar. So they're eating sugar. Now we put sugar into something that's hot and brown. Most people put their sugar into coffee in the morning. So this is the perspective of the ant in uh, a cup of coffee. The giant scoop swirled violently back and forth. Crushing waves fell over the ants. They paddled hard to keep their tiny heads above water, but the scoop kept spinning the hot brown liquid. Around and around it went, creating a whirlpool that sucked the ants deeper and deeper. They both held their breath and finally bobbed to the surface, gasping for air and spitting mouthfuls, mouthfuls of the terrible, bitter water. I love this picture. It's kind of fun, huh? Then the lake tilted and began to empty into a cave. The ants could hear the rushing water and felt themselves pulled toward the pitch black hole. Suddenly the cave disappeared and the lake became calm. The ants swam to, to the shore and found that the lake had steep sides. They turned down the walls and held back the lake, hurried down the walls and held back, that held back the lake. The frightened insects looked for a place to hide, worried that the giant scoop might have shoveled them up again. Close by, they found a huge round disc with holes that could neat, they could neatly hide, excuse me, that could neatly hide them. 
So here's the round disc. You think of something else that we eat at breakfast, that would be like that. And you can see it, it's red with the holes in it. But as soon as they climbed inside, their hiding place was lifted, tilted, and lowered into a dark space. When the ants climbed out of the holes, they were surrounded by a strange red glow. It seemed to them that every second the temperature was rising. It soon became so unbearably hot that they thought they would be soon be cooked. But suddenly the disc that they were standing on rocketed upward and the two hot ants went flying through the air. So you see it's our toaster, right? They landed near what seemed to be a fountain, a waterfall pouring from a silver tube. Both ants had a, power, had a powerful thirst and longed to dip their feverish heads into the refreshing water. They quickly climbed along the tube. As they got closer to the rushing water, the ants felt a cool spray. They tightly gripped the shiny surface of the fountain and slowly leaned their heads into the falling stream. But the force of the water was much too strong. The tiny insects were pulled off the foundation and plunged down into a wet, dark chamber. They landed on half-eaten fruit and other soggy things. Suddenly, the air was lifted, or was filled with loud, frightening sounds. The chamber began to spin. The ants were caught in a whirling storm of shredded food and stinging rain. Just as quickly as it had started, the noise and the spinning stopped. Bruised and dizzy, the ants climbed out of the chamber. Can you tell what that was? If you have a disposal in your sink, in the kitchen, that's what happened, like turn that on. In the daylight, once again, they raced through puddles and up a smooth wall, metal wall. In the distance, they saw something comforting two long, narrow holes that reminded them of the warmth and safety of their old underground home. They climbed into the dark openings, but there was no safety inside these holes. A strange force passed through the wet ants and they were stunned senseless and blown out of the holes like bullets from a gun. When they landed, the tiny insects were too exhausted to go on. They crawled into a dark corner and fell fast asleep. We don't want to get them. See, they were getting inside that plug hole. We know that's not a good thing. <laughs> Night had returned when the battered ants awoke to a familiar sound. The footsteps of their fellow insects returning for more crystals. The two ants slipped quietly to the end of the line. They climbed the glassy wall and once again stood amid, amid the treasure. But this time, they each chose a single crystal and followed their friends home. Standing at the edge of their ant hole, the two ants listened to the joyful sounds that came from below. They knew how grateful their mother queen would be when they gave her their crystals. At that moment, the two ants felt happier than they ever felt before. This was their home. This was their family. This was where they were meant to be. The end. So I, it's kind of interesting to look at that and hear this book from the ant's perspective. And it's kind of fun, one of my favorite books. And so I've already seen a ton of ants outside. So it kind of reminded me of this book and I wanted to read it to you. So I hope you have another fantastic week. Rockets go out and play. It's supposed to be 80 degrees today. So be nice and toasty and you'll ride your bikes or uh, go for a walk with your dog or something fun. And I also really enjoyed seeing you last week at the parade. That was fun and made me smile. I hope you have a wonderful week. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.